First Generation, Volume 1, Chapter 1, Bradford The skyline of the city was a string of grey pearls. If I stood on the bed in my attic bedroom, I could prop the sloping window in the roof open and heave myself up onto my elbows to scrutinise the view before me. Bradford in the 1950s was a town of heavy industry and was often covered in a fog, but the gritty particles in the air reflected and refracted the setting sun's glory in a way which transformed the horizon into a breathtaking technicolour scream, with pinks, oranges and mauves screaming triumphantly at the darkness. From here I could see the distant outline of the town hall, whose bell tower was modelled on the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence. Forever shrouded in a heavy black coat from years of pollution, it dominated the distant town square. Years later, when it was cleaned, I was surprised to see it was actually a pale gold and felt rather sorry for its new insubstantial covering. It seemed to be forever shivering in the bitter northern winters. We lived at number six Cliff Villas, a large Victorian semi in a discreet row of similar dwellings. There was a chicken farm on one side and a dentist on the other. Both neighbours were called Townsend. As well as filling our teeth, the dentist supplied us with old editions of the National Geographic magazine, a larger-sized edition in those days, which furnished my childhood imagination with a wealth of colourful images. Ladies with long ringed necks, Buddhist temples, icy Arctic mountains and savannah wastes. I spent hours poring over these and travelling in my head to the myriad lands contained in the glossy pages. The chicken farmer delighted us kids. He showed us round the runs in return for doing his shopping. Here's sixpence. I want three pence with the lemon sherbets and a bag of blackjacks. Mind you don't eat any neither. Occasionally, we would be asked to get a fish and three from the fish and chip shop. That's the cotton chips to you, southerners. The three being three old pence, the cost of a bag of chips. Our reward was entering the dark, warm corridors where the hens squawked and flapped in their cages. We would press forward to the wire, half agog, half terrified. The noise, smell and commotion of these creatures were extraordinary. At Easter there were the sweet yellow chicks in the heated batteries, and sometimes, as a treat, Townsend gave us the odd egg to hold, still warm from its mother. We played in the narrow cobbled street, out back, still worn from old cart tracks. Indeed, the cart still came round regularly. The rag and bone man's was one, when he trundled up and down the streets with his indecipherable cry for old clothes and bric-a-brac. Another was the cart that carried coal, which grimy men heaved onto their backs in sacks and poured down into the coal hole in the backyard, straight into the cellar, a dark, glittery stream which landed with a horrifying crash. We would interrupt our games to watch these fascinating activities and pat the huge steaming horses that waited patiently as the crashing and swearing took place. More often than not, we would be told to bugger off and leave us in peace. Then we would return to playing tin can squat or hopscotch. The former consisted of placing an old tin can in a chalk circle. Chalk was as indispensable to us kids as mobile phones are now, As well as marking out the squares for hopscotch, it was used for colouring wooden tops which we whipped into a frenzy with leather strings, standing back to watch and enjoy as the hues blended into a spinning rainbow. Whoever was it watched as another player kicked the tin out of the circle as far as he or she could. It ran after the can and put it back into the circle while the others hid. He then had to go and find the hiders. However, if at any point a hider had the good fortune to sneak back to the circle while the finder was finding, he or she could kick the tin again, causing a commotion which prompted us all to yell, Tin can squat! from whatever hiding place we were in, and then followed an undignified scramble while we all had to find new hiding places and elude the finder, who desperately ran from circle to can to circle while trying to get the others. (laughs) Great fun!